session here um, that I have got some great content around how to build your most effective playbook. We're going to explore the use of a playbook and you making sure that we focus on how you underpin that with the value selling principles. If you are a value selling methodology user, this is going to add to the knowledge that you have. If you aren't and you're interested in seeing how it underpins that and what it can use, there's information in there for you too. And this is suitable for you whether you are a sales rep yourself or managing a team or even running a large organization. So welcome. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move through here. Please do engage with us on social media as always. It's great to hear from you. We have our Twitter handle here at Value Selling, very active on LinkedIn, through YouTube. There's lots of videos and uh, media on there for you to interact with us and through Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter at Suze Askew. I'm very keen for us to have a conversation to on go, go on with the conversation about how we ensure great playbooks and great sales discussions uh, happen. So please do engage with us here. So we're going to have a, a session now talking about how value selling uh, underpins a great sales playbook. Uh, and to do that, just to fill up off, I wanted to get a little feel for uh, the sort of audience we have today and run a quick poll. I've got two questions that I uh, would like to pose to you guys uh, about playbooks, just to give me an idea of the type of audience we have here. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, how many of you have, have used a sales playbook before? And for this, I just want a yes, no answer. How many have used a sales playbook before? It could be in the role you're in now, or if you worked in an organi organization before. Great, thank you for uh, your answer. You see this, this is a top, hotly uh, contested vote, not as close as Brexit um, was in the UK here. Uh, right, so I think we've got enough answers coming through here. So I'm gonna close that. Uh, and so we had 55% uh, of you have used the playbook before and 45 haven't. So that's great, so I can really understand now that we've got a good proportion of the audience who have used one and some that haven't. And I think we're really going to be able to see if you have used one, uh, how you could upgrade that. And let's just double check now with the second question. How many of you have a playbook in play already? So using one currently. So I'll now launch that poll. A slightly different distribution of answers here. Okay, so we have, uh, I'm going to close that there. Thank you very much for taking part. So we've got 33% of you, 34, uh, say yes, you are using a playbook now, and 67% uh, say no. So we certainly have a good opportunity here to see uh, how you can use that and build on that too. Thank you very much for taking part in that. Okay, cool, let's move forward. How are we going to use value selling to create a great playbook? And let's talk about what a playbook looks like. Our agenda today, what a playbook is and why use one? What value will it bring to you and your team? Um, and again, this is good for managers, if you manage a team or reps, if you're a bit more uh, working on your own or, or running a large organization. Then we're going to delve into using the value setting framework to structure your playbook and make sure that it really has good structure to add value to your team and help them exceed their sales targets. I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about driving the use of playbook in your team. It's all very well spending time and the resource building a playbook, but if it isn't used and used well, then I guess there's little point to putting all that effort in. And we want to give you and your organizations the best chance of sales success. I'm going to look at that through effective coaching and innovative technology. And of course, as with anything, you want to measure the success of that playbook mm. and using that methodology. How do you see the value uh, and what have our clients seen in their value? And then we're going to have some time to wrap up some questions. Feel free to pose a question throughout the, the webinar. We're going to gather those together and I'll address them uh, at the end of our session. So there's our agenda. Uh, let's get straight to it. So what is the playbook? Well, it is a central collection of uh, tools and information, tactics, 
for your effective sales activity and an effective execution of your sales methodology. It is the place where you share what works well for your, from your best salespeople, the, the, the ones that have gathered the best results. It is an opportunity to gather consistent and best practice messaging, something I'm really passionate about that I've seen in organizations I've worked in and with clients where you've got inconsistencies across sales reps uh, through your business, through messaging, pricing, proposals, uh, what your products offer and how they're delivered that can really cause some challenges with the client experience. So we want to make sure we have consistent and best practice messaging there. It's going to be a place where you can understand how to have the most efficient sales conversations. This is a very big theme about how we, how we get the best from playbooks. Having an efficient sales conversation is key. Everybody will, is interested in reducing their conversion time and incre increasing the percentage of conversion. Uh, and the time that reps spend building up knowledge and information about clients needs to be reduced so you can spend more time selling and more time with your clients. You're going to capture the best key competitor information. It's very important you know what your competitors are doing and there's always lots of information around in the business, but you need to gather that together to make it useful and accessible for people. Finally, Make a playbook is an easy to access place with easy to use resources that your sales rep, your sales team can go to get what they need to know. So for me, it's very easy to think about why you'd want to have a playbook. Uh, you want to make sure that all your sales team have the best opportunity of success at any one time to drive revenue for their success and for your business and your organization. Okay, so let's think about what you do when you bring a sales rep into a business or when you join joined an organization, you have training, right? You have an opportunity to learn what the products and services are, and you may learn about the methodology that that organization is using. And as we all know, training is an ongoing process and that we want to make sure we're training people all the time. But as an organization, they want you to begin getting results, right? They want you to begin seeing uh, revenue in. But after you leave a workshop or you've had the training, it's very easy for that memory retention to set in. Over time, over the days following training, the, the, what you retain from a training course or a module really drops dramatically, very, very fast. Our workshops at Value Selling Associates are full of great learning tools to help people have a great experience. And you come out pretty pumped. I've got all these new uh, tricks and I've got this methodology I can follow. But in actual fact, you get back into the weeds of work and it's very, very hard to start affecting behavior change. We work with our clients to make sure they have lots of reinforcement activities. And this could be a topical refresher email, which you might send out for six weeks after a training, uh, coaching sessions with managers, a webinar perhaps, just like this one, to help give your professionals lots of resources to keep learning and feel inspired and for their sales activity. Uh, but you need to do these things in order to make sure that people have, are, their memories are being jogged and they're having an opportunity to use what you have taught them in the training. If we don't do any of this, we don't give them an opportunity to access more materials, uh, then that's not the fairest way to give them a chance to generate revenue. The sales needed, leaders need to be there coaching and supporting to make sure that, well, basically they don't forget what they've learned and they're able to implement it quickly. So I wanted to spend just a bit of time thinking about, okay, people are going to forget that. So how do we create a re repository and somewhere for them to be that allows them to access all the right information? So I want to demonstrate to you how you can leverage the value selling framework in your playbook to make the best repository, I'll use that word again, uh, so that they have uh, the right sort of information. You're gonna capture best practice. And I suggest you ask yourself as a business a few questions about what you would want uh, your methodology to deliver. What tangible business value have you delivered to other clients? This is crucial, crucial information. If you can quantify what it is you've delivered to clients, what value they've received, this is key information for your sales messages. And you want lots of different examples of that too. How do the best sales calls sound? That might not just be sales calls. Many of you will be out in the field having meetings and other discussions through other media. But what is it, how is it that they are planned and executed? What makes them excellent? And what makes them successful? And finally, how do you position your unique capabilities? 
I'm sure many of you work in environments where it's a very saturated market, it's very hard to be completely unique in your capabilities. There are definitely things you're going to do better than your competitors. And how do you position those effectively against the problems that your clients find? So sales methodology drives and underpins and is the foundational structure of a playbook and should address all of these questions. I thought I'd delve into that a little bit further so that I can show you how a sales methodology would drive the content of a sales playbook. So initially you need your customer analysis, your buyer personas. Your customer analysis could actually be about the segmentation of your industry or market. What are the key trends? Who are your key buyers and influences? But it has to hold a profile of your ideal customer or client. What do they look like? What are their, uh, what, how would you identify them? What are the problems and preferences? And particularly, what are the key business issues that they are facing that your sales reps and your sales professionals are going to be selling to them? So how do we position that? We need to know who our buyers are. And we suggest within a, a playbook that you have a persona for every type of contact you might have within that sales cycle. Now for complex enterprise sales, that's going to be a large number of people. You could have a, a good few in there for a type of sale. Or more transactional, you may or may not have one or two contacts. But making sure that you have those personas so that your sales teams can really understand who those people are. A clear buying process. So how, uh, we're going to talk about that in the next couple of slides, how people buy from you, what is it that they need to know, uh, and how, what process you're going to go through, how you solve your customer's problems. And also then how the customer has that discussion within their business so that you can, they can push yourself forward to a close. What is your value proposition? If you, if you haven't got a value proposition, this is the time to put that in there. Uh, if you do have one, this is how you make sure that it's available to everybody. Why should people buy this product from you? What is the value they will receive? Now, at Value Selling, it's in our name, we talk about um, what value people will get from using a product or service. And we split this into personal or business value. Now, the business value could be tangible business metrics, your personal value is why people would um, personally uh, buy that product or service. Is it something to do with the legacy they'd like to leave in an organization, something they want to drive forward for their team, or something that's very important to them? Do your value propositions tap into the business uh, metrics that they may receive? Your competitive analysis. So if we are looking at sales methodologies and what makes us successful as a sales organization, you want to know what your sales competitors are doing. How do they position themselves in the market? What is their selling process? And what are the typical moves they've made? Maybe they've got a lot of sales promotion going on, or maybe they've used a, a similar methodology to you and you know how to counteract some of those discussions that they would have with your customers. Then into handling objections. Now, sales methodology will allow you to make ensure that your sales process is smooth enough to address objections as they come up early. Now, if you do get objections, commonly they arrive towards the end of the sales cycle. Could you do with price? It's always a very common one. It could be really an, a call for more information. If we haven't been able to establish what value a customer might be able to receive, we're going to get an objection. But if you have in your playbook information for your sales reps on just how to handle those objections effectively and address them, welcome them and address them, they should be stored here. And finally, your best practice, areas where you're going to have information about your proposals, templates for people to use, proven tips and techniques that have worked well. And actually, this should capture what hasn't really worked well in the past uh, and uh, any associated learnings with that so that you've got a clear and concise message for everybody. Your sales methodology is weaved through this, uh, especially, let me revisit handling objections, we would use our uh, qualified prospect formula to go back across all of the discussions and say to ourselves, what is it that we missed uh, during our discussions and during our meetings and during the scoping and discovery process that means we have an objection now, and how can we go back and address that? I mentioned I would go through the value buying process a bit more. And this is what it looks like. These are the six boxes that underpin the value selling um, methodology itself and underpin our value prompter, which is our sales discussion tool. Starts at the top with a business issue. 
And then we move into, if we understand a business issue, what the problems are that are stopping our customers and clients from solving their business issue. Business issues are generally somebody's top priority. It would be driven by a revenue target or something they need to do in a certain time frame. But it's their number one priority and what really keeps them awake at night. So they will have a number of problems that stop them from resolving that business issue. And they've probably got a very good picture in their mind of what the solution might be. Now we say that we need to confirm that those solutions uh, fix the business issue in order to have a differentiated vision match. And the solution must be differentiated against the competitor and must be right for the business. Mm. Once they have that differentiated vision match, you then move to establishing value, our yellow box on the left. In the value box, as I mentioned before, we'd be looking at business metrics against each problem that people will solve. And I'll give you an example in a minute of what that looks like. We then move into power. Who are the power people that you need uh, on board and you need to engage with to make sure that this uh, solution will go into place? And does it solve their business issues also? And power people have very different business issues perhaps than your main contact. And finally, a plan, a mutually agreed plan to move forward. Now a buyer, take for example, if I ran a busy media sales team, perhaps I have 30 salespeople in my team. We have hard targets and the team use leads generated online through our marketing team. Now it's my, my sales team's job to follow up those leads and qualify them quickly and start moving them through the sales cycle. And they do this mostly by telephone. So this is an inside sales organization. I run that team. I'm responsible for the revenue that we generate. So that's my business issue. I will have revenue targets over the quarter of the year that I need to solve. But I have a number of problems that are stopping me getting to that business issue. I may have fast turnover of staff, lack of training for my salespeople, and tough competition in the market. Uh, and I know that both the best and most ideal solution could well be uh, a training product that will allow me to get a better uh, training experience for my my salespeople will make sure they know how to handle it against the competitors and that will keep them in the business longer and drive results but i need to demonstrate to my superiors that it's worth investing in in order to get that so the business values around increased revenue uh, longer uh, reduced attrition or uh, longer tenure of my staff uh, and absolutely I, I will solve those problems I know who the people are in the organization, my power people that I need to tap into to get this signed off. And I also know how quickly that needs to happen to affect my business issue. So the sales conversation and the buying conversation is exactly the same. And we need to tap into that. And your sales book should be positioned to help your salespeople understand just how to have that uh, buying conversation with their clients. We'll come back to the media sales team shortly. So if we've got a methodology underpinning all of the content, what content should we really have in there? I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about what the content looks like. Your content needs to be up to date and delivered via a mul multiple media sources in an easy accessible format. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about how value selling has a play, but what do we do? Up on the screen here, we have Chad Sanderson. He's having a fireside chat with us about Vortex prospecting. Our, our prospecting module and in the in the playbook that we use we have a section about selling vortex which is all media uh, resources it could be the uh, audio snapshot that Chad is advertising here or it could be another uh, uh, video that they've put together with specific sales tips and in there is going to talk to us the salespeople about clients that have used it, success in the workshop, and some more information that we might need to use. The great sales tool. Then if we move along, we've got a set of collateral that we need. And this is where we organize all of the information uh, that you might need in order to sell that. So our PDF brochures, uh, case studies, PowerPoint, proposals, all the kind of information that you need in order to ha make have a great com an informed conversation with prospects about this product and also things that you can send them so they are more informed themselves. Then we have a number of value prompters. I'll talk a bit more about what a value prompter looks like. Those of you who are very familiar uh, will, uh, with value prompters will think of them very fondly and have them clear in your mind how they look. Value prompter is the six boxes of the value buying process 
mapped into a discussion tool with us that you can prepare for your clients. And we say have one of those for each relevant persona in your sales contact. And make sure that you understand that you have every power person covered uh, and who that's for. Within that value prompter, you should have example open pro confirm questions for all stages of the process. I uh, will delve into open pro confirm questions in a moment to, for those of you who aren't familiar with it or would enjoy a bit of a refresher. Also within the value prompt is your opportunity to detail out the objection handling and competition details because we're going to position the products and services uh, against those competitors in our solution questions that we give our clients and how we solve their problems. And for Value Selling Associates here, we, we would have a number of then webinars for Vortex Prospecting. Now these could be industry information, it could be something to do with other products, uh, it could be a webinar internal or external, but it's a resource for people to use to make sure that they uh, are keeping up to date and informed. And then uh, moving on from that, we have links to white papers and also key press information. And the white papers and press information are great resources and research for salespeople to draw out some of those tactical conversation um, prompts. Perhaps the client or prospect has been in the news recently and it's an opportunity to get in touch and restart the conversation so that you can perhaps um, restart that prospect call or have a better understanding of what's gone on there. So all this information needs to be kept up to date and it needs to be accessible in, in different formats too. So we're going to leave this window here and come back uh, to content uh, in, a minute, in a moment. I want to talk to you about value prompters. Um, as I mentioned, we would have a number of value prompters for each particular salesperson within uh, a particular, sorry, particular contact within your sales lead. You don't necessarily have to use a value prompter here, but it's a great tool to map. What I want to make sure that is covered in your playbook is a really clear view of what you need to know must have an accurate view of the typical business issues that your clients and prospects face so that your salespeople already know the types of questions they need to ask to get to those business issues and they're very informed. You're creating here subject matter experts without them having to go away and do that information uh, and um, research all that information. But have a comprehensive view of numerous problems faced. Um, in all the years that I've been in sales, it's very clear that we all get very excited about moving straight from, oh, you have this problem, I know how I can fix it for you, straight to the solution box and giving them a solution. And how often then do we miss perhaps a wider opportunity uh, or miss selling them perhaps a different solution that might solve one or more of their problems? So if we have an idea of what the particular issues they might face could be, we can probe the question, probe with great questions to understand a bit more about what other problems they face. And we could increase that deal size quite a lot by making sure that we delved in there a little bit longer. So we always coach, stay a little bit longer in the problem box and find out a bit more. In your playbook, have some definition of the unique or best capabilities that you have against your competition and what problems that will solve and link them directly. Help your salespeople make those really key connections that help define uh, why it is that you are the best solution for that particular client. Then clear demonstrations of the business value linked to the problem and what do those values look like and what have our other clients seen that they have uh, really realized. And then common routes to accessing that power. It's really hard sometimes to get to the power people in a lead. It can stall your conversations and and really elongate the sales process. Whilst you wait for power people to be available or find ways of getting to those people without upsetting your existing sales uh, contact and relationship. And if people have been able to do that before, sharing those tips and hints of common routes to accessing power is really important. Finally, what does a good plan look like? We coach about mutual plans uh, that have been pulled together with your clients that have key milestones in there as to when the next meeting will happen, when is the budget released, when does your solution need to be implemented, when will power people be available. And if you can demonstrate what a good plan looks like, put a template in and put that in the, the sales collateral and toolkit that your salespeople need, you're going to save them a lot of time and a lot of effort in the way they pull together those plans. Also in our sales playbook, we need to see that we've got great questions. 
So those of you familiar with our Open Probe Confirm questions uh, will be familiar with OPC. I always like to explain it with the example of my son. When he comes home from school, I ask him an open question about how his day was. Kellen, how was your day at school? Good, he says, well, that wasn't the expansive answer I was really looking for, so I have to probe. So I say something like, Kellen, I know you had sports today. How was your sports? Oh, mom, I forgot my kit, so I couldn't play sports. I had to sit out, and I also got a time debt at the end of the day. So, Kellen, it sounds like, because you didn't have your kit, it wasn't such a great day, you had to sit out, and you want to look at a better way of preparing for school, right? So, okay, yeah. So I confirmed with him that actually he needed to do a bit more planning for his day to get the best out of it. But the key thing is here that he's not really interested in telling me about his day. He's time poor, and he's time poor because he wants to go and play his, his console. Our clients are time poor because they're busy. They're being dragged in many different directions. So an open pro confirm questioning cadence allows us to be very, very swift in how we get to the right conversation point. In your playbook, you want to be able to give your salespeople the best examples of questions that allow them to get very quickly to the crux of an issue, the crux of the solution, so that they can really position your solution well. An open pro confirm is the best way to do that. Now, if your salespeople have created great questions, they are excellent, they're gems to share with other salespeople. Save some time, share that information. Think about the, uh, the media team manager that I was talking about an example earlier. If he could give all of his junior sales team lots of information about, uh, and lots of questions that they could use, you're gonna save them a lot of time, help build their confidence. And even if you give them a template, they can make that question their own. So I've given you a few examples here. We have questions for un uncovering problems and what else to dig for. Perhaps you use examples of what other clients have told you. Do you find this a problem as well? And then examples of questions to position your organization uh, as the best, uh, the best solution, as uniquely as possible. So you wanna give them these examples. In our workshops, it takes a vast majority of our time to create and generate these great questions. So why not capture them and share them with your team? The personas, let's just delve into that quickly. What do you want to have in the content of personas? So we would suggest you have a value prompter for each person involved. They have different if, business issues for different people, for different contexts. So if your common contacts are managers, MDs, CEOs, who are they and what are their common issues? Identify how to create a coach or advocate in the sale, especially if you've got a very complex, long enterprise sale. Having a coach within the business to mm. help keep that moving is very important. How have other salespeople managed to do that in the past? What is it that they did that made that most successful? And maybe you've got common sales saboteurs, things that have held back, stalled, or actually destroyed your prospects in the past. How did you deal with it? How did you turn them around and make them see the value of, of working with your organization and have those personas in place? So the resources and research section is very important for a playbook. Commonly, around 20% of the sales rep's time is taken up doing research uh, on their leads and on their prospects. And you could even give them 10% of that time back to actually go back and do more sales activities, spend time with clients, building those prospects. I'm sure nobody would disagree that that's a great use of time. So make sure that actually this playbook is giving them an opportunity to fast track through all of that. But your resources and research could take the shape of having collab and collaboration mm -hmm. groups as well. I would absolutely recommend, and I have seen work with sales playbooks that I've worked with and that my clients have worked with, but having a collaboration group to help people work through different sales challenges or uh, subject matter experts for your new products to help cross sell. Having a collaboration group where they can come together and discuss their sales leads is really a really powerful uh, tool for them to use. Give them access to webinars and podcasts just like this one or podcasts that are going to help them and have them loaded up. Uh, and also perhaps you might encourage your sales team to create their own webinars and pod podcasts uh, to help develop their own skill set and share with their colleagues too. Have somebody pull together the white papers and press releases that are going to be most important. And I'll talk about how you manage your playbook shortly. But having all that, the resources and information there really will drive the best activity and the best use of your sales rep time. 
Okay, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how we drive the use of a sales playbook. It can get muddy out there, it can get dirty, it can get difficult for salespeople uh, to really have uh, ongoing improvement and great revenue. So let's give them a chance to do the best work by supporting them with the playbook and driving use of it. The first one I'm going to look at is coaching. In our workshops, we spend a lot of time coaching the managers of sales teams so they can best support sales people as they are out in the field and dealing with competitors and dealing with their, with their challenges. But coaching is a, an ongoing cyclical process. It's continuous. It means it never stops. And it will drive the adoption of methodology or any of your sales tactics and produce results. We use this table to a model to help define what that coaching should look like in a sales environment. So very quickly from the top, we would assess what's going on with that rep, what deals opportunities do they have, and how do they execute it? Are they using a framework? Then we want you to communicate your expectations. What tools are you expecting them to use and what do you expect them to do within those calls and meetings and discussions? Then there's a demonstration. So as leaders, as sales managers, uh, we should be demonstrating the right behavior in those sales discussions, sharing our pre-call plans, plan letters and role plays too. And as sales reps, we should be asking that of our managers and leaders too. Practice those role plays. Uh, nobody jumps up and says, I love a role play. Um, but actually, when time after time in workshops, we see that people have great fun doing role plays. It's the best time for getting learning. Role play some mm. of those key business discussions that you're going to face. And make sure that you, you, uh, you continue to do role play as a key act, um, activity. Observe. So make sure that you're observing your salespeople, uh, perhaps in a field audit or a ride along or sit next to them. Now, when they're on a call, uh, if you're a sales rep, a sales uh, professional, and you want your managers to come along with you, ask them to do that, ask for that feedback, because it's only through feedback that coaching really works. And coaches need to be able to see what's going on to understand where they can add value, upgrade and build that skill set. Everybody needs feedback, whether we like giving feedback or receiving feedback, we've got to get good at it. And the best way to upgrade your sales message is to make sure you're doing that in a timely way. So if you are around, it, totally in those sales conversations, you have the opportunity to be very timely and make sure it's truthful, specific, positive and motivating uh, and allows us to upgrade our sales conversation. But they're continually doing that. And if you're not being coached, ask for that coaching because it is the best way for us to improve. Your playbook should underpin that and should allow the coach to draw on those tools in order to improve the coaching experience. Up to three hours of coaching per month can result in 17% better results for people who've had coaching versus those that haven't. Combined training and coaching improves productivity by up to 88% versus training alone. And improving coaching can result in 19% increase in revenue or more. This is what our clients see. So the importance of coaching is very easy to demonstrate. The second way that you want to make sure you're driving the use of your playbook is that it's delivered through great technology. And this is where we get to some of the new and innovative ways of delivering playbook information. I've worked with clients who are still looking at using paper-based playbooks, and they work very well. People have them on their desk. It's a useful tool to refer to. It can be challenging to keep those up to date. Uh, and you haven't got an opportunity either to add in multimedia tools. And lots of people learn in different ways and retain information in different ways. So why not use some great technology to underpin your playbook? It must be accessible and easy to use. So it's going to really bring into play what it is that you, uh, you have uh, available. So I, uh, I looked at some of the playbook technologies that, that I've used in the past and some are available in market. And there's a real huge amount of, of available information. I also talked to a few people about how they use their intranet uh, as a playbook resource. Resoundingly, the response was that an internal internet can be an excellent way of building a, a playbook. But in fact, the use of an internal internet is dying. There are so many great platforms out there, innovative technology that allow you to do lots more cool stuff that actually is stepping out of those intranets uh, and kind of very resource heavy ways of building an internal tool and seeing what's available in the market for you to use. So, Workplace by Facebook, something that I've used with the sales team that I work with, 
not free and some of these are going to be free and some of them are going to perhaps cost a subscription but it's global it's in a format that people understand a great place to upload different pieces of information and also a community building scenario and i think it's very important in a playbook that you build a sales community of your sales team allow them to interact with each other post questions and have an ongoing discussion Drupal is another way uh, that you can um, use a platform that you can use. And for that, you may need some more technical support and some investment, but it brings together really collaborative working spaces uh, and has some very uh, interesting, innovative ways of building on that technology. Believe it or not, WhatsApp can be an excellent sales playbook tool. Uh, I worked with an organization earlier this year who had uh, a really disparate global sales function. Uh, the teams were all over the world using all different legacy systems within their businesses. And they found that WhatsApp was the one way that they could all come together uh, and share information and communicate well. And my tip here really is that if your salespeople are using a platform to communicate with each other, to share information and share uh, their tips and hints, then you leverage that platform if you can, rather than forcing them onto something perhaps they're not used to using or is a bit too technically difficult. Okay, Slack something I also use with a lot of my um, the teams that I work with, a really great co-working tool. You can load up all types of media, have lots of channel discussions, um, and it's a great team communication tool. It can be an excellent platform for a sales playbook, and it's free. Uh, if you go over a certain number of of users, of course, you will have to start um, moving to a paid model. But these are low-cost entry point tools that you can use. Flock, something that I came across very recently, another great uh, co-working space that you can um, use. And Yammer, perhaps the most established one that I've come across as a playbook, um, certainly where I've used Yammer with a sales team, there was a lot of opportunity for sharing content and making sure that you've got your up-to-date PowerPoint value proposition. And people can kind of have a discussion about those as we've uploaded our new value proposition, what was good about it, what did they find was useful, and that's available to everybody within the sales team. But find what's right for you. I encourage you to think about, is it cross-device? How will people access that information? Is there a community aspect uh, to it? Can we get our salespeople to discuss with one another uh, what is going on and what is uh, important? Is it easy to update and manage? We don't want anything too technical that has taken a lot of money and investment for you to design because that makes it difficult for ongoing updating and managing. And who will manage it? Not every organization has a sales enablement team who can take responsibility for that. It could be a fantastic thing to get people to volunteer to do, stretch assignments for some of your sales people to help be responsible for your sales playbook and make sure that they own the information that's within it. And that will help with your, um, the amount of um, uh, involvement and adoption that you get from that. So choose a technology that works for you, but keep an open mind that it doesn't need to be something very, very complex. Uh, there are lots of platforms out there. I've just touched the surface, to be honest. There are plenty more that you could use. So what value might you see from combining a methodology with a great sales book, but on a great platform with lots of in-depth information? Our clients see average sales orders could increase by something like 150%, increased cross-sell of add-on products by 20%, or an increased win rate of 10%. Now, if your average sale order is increased by any percentage, that's great news, and you will have done that by making sure you have shortened the sales cycle and made sure that the customer experience is much better. Cross-sell for a playbook allows you to make sure that you have given your sales reps the opportunity to learn about and be experts in every product that you offer by giving them the best information. And your win rates are going to be much higher because you have had effective sales conversations and been able to place and place your products against competitors very well. So I wanted to give you three of our tips, top tips for your playbook. Update your content regularly and make sure it's on an easy to use platform. Uh, and so that people can access it very straightforwardly. Train and support your managers to coach your sales team. Every sports team, the theme of this being game on, every sports team works with the best sales coach. Uh, it's not the manager that does the coaching, they have a coach that does that in, in a sales team. And as sales managers, we need to put a coach 
uh, persona on and make sure that we are really making sure we support our salespeople to do the best that they can do. And use a sales methodology that's proven, but make sure that it actually goes through a really rigorous uh, process to help make sure that salespeople don't miss anything along the way and maximize every opportunity. So in summary, your sales books, your playbooks, underpin the, the adoption of a sales process or methodology. If you've trained and invested in your sales team to make sure they are using a methodology, then make sure your playbook helps you to drive the adoption of that. It's your investment in them, shows you have value in your employees, make sure that you're able to show that. Great content and technology is key, and invite salespeople to be involved in the content and make sure that you are capturing the best of that sales team work, where they've had successes, how you're gonna capture that and replicate it for other salespeople. Help your managers to coach the team continually, make sure they are able to execute the processes you have and use the playbook to up their results. So that's our playbook, underpinned by a great methodology.